Fellas, today we're going to be ranking UFC champions based on how exciting they are now. This is going to be pretty self-explanatory. Last fighter will come basically the least interesting. And then the number one fighter of this list will be the most exciting champion in my opinion. Um, one thing I want to say before I get into the video is this is not going to be including things like how good they are on mic skills, how good they are in hyping up fights. This is purely just in the octagon. However... There may be external factors that could um that could affect this, and I'll explain throughout the video. You'll understand what I mean, but this is purely going to be how exciting their fights are on in general, like on an average. Um, let me know your list down below because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of contrasting opinions. But the first fighter, or the last fighter, technically, the least exciting champion is Leon Edwards. Now. I'm a Brit, but I don't have Brit bias. Listen, I'm not a Leon Edwards hater. In fact, I'm going to root for him to beat Edwards like I root for, rooted for him to beat Kamar Usman. But when it comes to excitingness, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I get really excited for Leon Edwards fights. Like, more often than not, he's just a point fighter. In average, like, he is just a point fighter. Now, that's not to say he doesn't have good highlights. Obviously, those punishing body kicks that he was throwing against Kamar Usman in the third fight. Even, obviously, the head kick, the iconic knockout as well. Um, the fight with Nate Diaz was really fun as well. But, in general, I don't really get excited much from watching Leon Edwards fight. The, the, like, it's just, it is just a very high technical, high perform, like, high level technical striking match with good takedown defense. He does have underrated grappling as well, but when I'm watching Leon Edwards, I can't sit here and say that I'm really excited. He's barely ever in wars. Uh, by what by a war, I mean, like, an absolute scrap, which does work for him because he's, he hasn't lost a fight since, what, 2015? Um, but I'm not going to sit here and pretend when I watch 25 minutes of Leon Edwards that I'm necessarily excited or hyped by the end of it. It is quite a slow-paced fight, kind of similar to Adesanya, but um, yeah, I'm going to put Leon Edwards at 8, not necessarily exciting, it is quite a slow-paced type of fighter, he's just a striker with good takedown defense that was able to get a finish recently against Usman, so I'm going to put Leon Edwards at number 8, not that exciting now, he also doesn't really tend to cut promos that well, and I know I said at the beginning, I'm not going to be including things like how good they are, you know, promotion and stuff, but maybe that has like a psychological factor into why we might not be interested in Leon Edwards, because Colby Covington isn't necessarily extremely interested either, but people really want to see him fight, so that's that's just another example but anyway number eight i'm putting leon edwards number seven i'm gonna go with sean strickland again a lot of people love sean strickland but i think people like sean strickland for him outside the octagon rather than him in the octagon it's the it's the interviews he does it's the things he says online it's the the press conferences he's had with adesanya that's why we like sean strickland inside the octagon I'm not going to sit here again and pretend that I really enjoy watching Sean Strickland fight for five rounds. The Adesanya fight, or just most of his fights in general, he doesn't really tend to put you on the seat, on the edge of your seat. But I know the Adesanya fight he did, though. I'll exclude the Adesanya fight because obviously when he dropped Adesanya, I think we were all shocked. But if you look at his fights, most of his fights... There's never really times where Sean Strickland's putting you on the edge of your seat throughout the entire fight. He's quite slow-paced in the octagon. He has this weird kind of sparring style that works. People like to call it the Mayweather style, uh, but it does work. He, I mean, he's literally the champion of the world now. Really entertaining on the mic. And I feel like with Strickland, it's more of the fight result that impresses us about Strickland. Like the fact he was able to beat Adesanya and the fact he's been able to beat a few of these guys. It's not the fight itself that impresses us like... If I was to watch Sean Strickland and I didn't, and he wasn't this massive trash dog, he was just another boring personality, I'm, I probably wouldn't be that invested into his fights. I'm just gonna, I probably wouldn't be that invested. I'd just see him as another guy that's managed to become champion and he's pretty, pretty fucking good for the middleweight division. But Sean Strickland, I'm gonna put him at seven. Number six, there's definitely gonna be people that disagree with this one. John Jones. Now, this isn't saying that he's not dominant. And you know what? This isn't even, is even me saying that he's boring. I don't think he's boring. But at the same time, I wouldn't necessarily call Jones, at least recently anyway, an exciting fighter. If we look back at Jones back when he was like 21 years old, I'm going to sit here and say that he was one of the most exciting fighters they had in the UFC. He was beating people he shouldn't have been beating. He was just destroying them whenever, whether it came to grappling. He was out grappling grapplers, out striking strikers. But nowadays... And I know he got a finish in his last fight, so I know the Garn Mauling kind of kind of just gets like discredits everything I'm about to say. But I feel like recently in his recent performances, or at least in the 2019, 2020 time, he just looked seemed to have slowed down a lot. And I just don't think his fights were as exciting. I can't sit here and say that his fights are boring. But at the same time, I just don't think he was there was as exciting as they could have been. He kind of reminds me of Floyd Mayweather. People tune in to watch Floyd Mayweather lose or see how he's going to do. 
but I'd say they're there for the result, not really for the fight itself. And I can kind of see that with Jones. Now, obviously, he's got a much bigger danger factor than Mayweather. But again, I feel like a lot of people watch him to see, oh my gosh, is this new contender going to beat John Jones or is John Jones going to flatline? Not flatline, but is this new, is John Jones going to beat them like he normally does? And I feel like that's why people watch Jones. We don't really watch John Jones to see the most entertaining fight in the UFC. No disrespect to him. Um, he is extremely dominant, but I'm going to put him at number six. Next fighter, number five, I'm going with Big Boy Pantoja. Actually, not really Big Boy. He's the smallest guy and the smallest champion we've got, but Pantoja number five. I'm going to put Pantoja number five because, um, yeah, this is where he starts to get exciting. Pantoja is an exciting fighter. It's You can't deny it. He is an exciting fighter because he always comes there to scrap, whether it's against Figueredo, whether it's against Moreno, no matter who he's against, he's going to be there to scrap. Um, and he has a war in every single one of his fights. There's blood everywhere. He hits pretty hard as well. And I can't wait to see him versus Brandon Roy Valley. I actually think that's going to be the fight of the night at UFC 296. But the one thing that's stopping him from being higher on in this list, well, there's two things. The first thing is no one really has any emotional baggage or emotional connection to Pantoja. And I think, and I know I said I'm not going to include external things, but this is kind of vital because no one, well, at least from what I know, I don't think there's much people in the MMA community that really care if Pantoja's winning or losing. Like, if I was to tell you that Sean Strickland was going to get flatlined by Adesanya or Oliveira was going to get flatlined in his next fight, everyone would be, you know, everyone would be, what are you talking about? That can't be, you've you, you got, you got to be joking. But if I told you that Pantoja is going to lose his next fight, I think the, the overall reaction will be, oh, that sucks for him anyway. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no one really has any emotional baggage into Pantoja. And that can be kind of the reason why we're not as excited. And another reason and this is in the octagon as well, there are moments where he'll try and look for a sub or he'll kind of try and slow the pace down a little bit. Um, for example, it could be looking for a submission on an opponent and when he looks for that submission, he takes a lot of time doing so and it kind of slows the pace of the fight down. Or a good example recently at UFC 290 when he kind of just backpacked, I don't know what round it was, I think it was one of the later rounds, but he just kind of backpacked Moreno, just sat, sat on his back for the entirety of the round trying to cure time. And it's times like that that really take away from him because overall, he's a really entertaining fighter. He goes there to scrap and scrap only. And um, for that reason, I like watching, watching Pantoja. I think he's a really good champion. I'll put him at number five and I think he's going to beat uh, Brandon Royval as well. Number four. Now we're getting into the entertaining champions. Alexander Volkanovsky. I love watching Alexander Volkanovsky purely because of the, the look of the faces of the fighters that or, or of his opponents after he's done beating them. Now, obviously, I'm I'm not going to include the most recent match against Makachev because it was him on the receiving end of the beating, but you look at the opponents of Volkanovsky's face after they've faced him. Holloway, um, Brian Ortega, Korean Zombie, Yaya Rodriguez, Islam Makachev the first time. Everyone's got an absolute battered face. It's just satisfying to see Volkanovski batter everyone. I know, I'm not, I know obviously everyone's going to be like, oh, he didn't batter Islam. I know he lost to Islam, but at least at featherweight, it's just entertaining to see him batter everyone. Now, that's not that's not me saying I hate everyone he faces, but I just like seeing him. I just like seeing a fighter dominate people in their weight class. And for me, Volkanovski is definitely that guy. Um, the look of people's faces after fighting him, and he's extremely well-rounded as well. He's got some of the best wrestling, one of the best wrestlers in featherweight, and in my opinion, the best striker we've got at featherweight. Everyone comes with different styles. You've got Brian Ortega with BJJ, Holloway with boxing, Rodriguez with kickboxing, and he's able to shut down everyone's game. And for me, that's just really exciting to watch from a guy like Volkanovski. Really, really high level, the highest level it can get. So I'm going to put Volkanovski at number four for entertainment. I just love watching Volkanovski fight, and he's really exciting in my opinion. Next fighter. Now we're in the top three. His previous opponent, Islam Makachev. Islam Makachev is extremely underrated when it comes to um when it comes to grappling. There'll be a lot of MMA fans, specifically more often than not the casuals that are like, oh, Islam Makachev is just another Dagestani. You know, he's this Dagestani guy that's going to try to take you down on laying you for five and laying you for five rounds. But if you watch Islam Makachev fight, let's be honest. If Islam Makachev wasn't Dagestani and he was like I don't know American or Brazilian, people would love him right most of mma fans would love him but the fact is dagestani people just don't want to like him when you really watch islam fight 
He's a really fun fighter. Knocking out Volkanovski like it was nothing in the most recent fight. The head kick knockout. Dominated Oliveira um, when it came to grappling. Then dropped him and submitted him immediately. Had an extremely fun fight with Volkanovski. Submitted Dan Hooker. Submit Well, I don't think it was a submission, but a TKO over Bobby Green as well. He's just dominating everyone. And he is the most well-rounded fighter in the UFC. He's dangerous on the feet. He's got brutal knockout power. Way more of a threat on the feet than Habib was. And he's also a big, big submission threat on the ground as well. Islam's just extremely exciting because there's not one fighter in the UFC that I can look at right now and say that Islam Makachev loses to this guy. High, high chances of a finish as well. It's very, very rare that Islam goes to a decision. And for me, Islam Makachev's top three most exciting champions in the UFC. I just love watching him fight. Um, listen, I'm not even a massive Islam fanboy. I'm going to be honest here. I rooted for Volkanovski to beat him. I rooted for Oliveira to beat him. But I've got to sit here and respect him because he's exciting and he gets the job done. So I'm going to put Islam at number three. Number two, the second most exciting champion, Sean O'Malley. Get rid of your opinions on him. You might think he's an absolute toss pot. You might think he's an idiot. You might hate him outside the octagon. You might think he's arrogant because I certainly do. But when it comes to fighting, you can't... Unless you're extremely biased, it's pretty much impossible to find O'Malley boring. I know you can talk about the decision he had against Yan, but that wasn't his fault. Look at the fight he had with Yan. One of the funnest fights we had last year at UFC 280. Knocking out Aljamain Sterling. Even the, the win over Yan, and, even the win over Yan. No one said he was going to beat Yan. You know, everyone said that Yan's going to maul him. Didn't happen. Aljamain Sterling, everyone, including myself, said that Sterling's going to take him down and dominate him. Knocks him out. Has so many knockouts on his resume. Absolutely insane striker as well. Sean O'Malley for me. I can't wait for him to fight Marlon Vera. I think it's UFC 299. For me, Sean O'Malley is one of the most entertaining in the UFC. He's such a smooth striker to watch. He's one of my favorite strikers to watch, man. He's so smooth with the way he moves. Even his old fights before he was in the UFC, the way he was throwing his kicks and the way he was measuring his opponents with range was just super entertaining to watch. Um, he's a big star as well. Everyone's interested in him. So Sean O'Malley's going in number two for the most entertaining fighter. He's even in, in a competitive war or is KOing people. Simple as that. And I'm going Sean O'Malley number two. Hits like a truck as well. Number one. I'm going with Alex Pereira. I'm going with Pereira. I think a lot of people would agree with this. Pereira for me is the most exciting fighter for you in the UFC. Or not in the UFC. But at least when it comes to champions. And I'm going to say the main reason is emotional baggage. Kind of like the opposite of Pantoja. And this is an external factor, but everyone wants to see Pereira win. It could also... Maybe we care more about the result than the actual fight itself, but it's hard to admit that Pereira isn't an entertaining fighter. When he fought Adesanya the second time, the rematch... Um, not the rematch, the first fight in the UFC... It was just him walking down Adesanya for five rounds. There were rounds that he lost, but it was him walking down Adesanya. And it was fun because we were watching Pereira and we knew that any moment he could have ended the fight. And he did at the end. In the in the rematch, he got knocked out. Still an entertaining fight. Knocks out Yuri Prohaska. Makes a massive comeback against Jan Blachowicz. Sleeps Sean Strickland. He is a human highlight reel. I know every fighter that tends to get finishes, they say that about, they say about Gaethje as well. But Pereira for me is the most exciting champion. When Pereira is fighting i just can't wait from the walkout to when he's actually striking he's one of he's one of the best strikers in the ufc everyone wants him to win it doesn't matter the opponent he could be facing magabed and Kalaev, and i'd still be wanting to see him fight so for me Pereira's the number one most exciting fighter in the ufc um or at least the most exciting champion but let me know your thoughts on this let me know your own list because in my opinion this has got to be my list in terms of more exciting well least exciting to most exciting but um, yeah, let me know your list down below. Do you agree with this one? And thank you for watching.